In today's video, we're gonna find out why I quit. And I am living in a van down by the river. Technically not by a river today, but yes, mamanos. Welcome to our channel, A Swole Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and time for I don't know what's going on. Basically, just, I, I don't know. But uh, I am going into non-teaching status as a scuba instructor, and this is the first time that I've done that since I got certified, and I'm going to tell you why. And to be clear, this video is not about putting down the job, the industry, organizations, nothing like that. I have absolutely enjoyed my time as a scuba instructor. So before we get into why I'm leaving, I'm going to talk about why I still think that being a scuba instructor is such a wonderful and priceless thing. Of course, the main reason was, I mean, my office was a boat. I got to take people to see manta rays and turtles and play in currents and be outside. It was one of the most beautiful offices that you could ever ask for. I got to help people face their fears. As far as my own personal development, I cannot even express the amount of growth by being challenged with difficult environments and making decisions under pressure and learning how to be confident with myself. So now let's get to the tough stuff. Aside from global pandemic, let's talk about why dive professionals leave the industry. First one, uh, the job doesn't pay super great. As we covered in our uh, scuba instructor salary video, it's not a high paying job. But luckily, in a lot of the places where you teach, at least in tropical areas, the cost of living is very low, so you can actually make it work quite well. That is, of course, if you do not live like an extravagant lifestyle. If you're going out with all of your clients and spending money in bars and nightclubs and whatever, then yeah, you're, you're going to be tight pretty much all the time. But if you live a really boring, early to bed kind of lifestyle, <laughs> then you can actually do just fine. That being said, you'll never be rich doing this work. So depending on your goals, you know, it can it can really work for you or or not. You know, it's kind of a personal decision there. Loneliness. A lot of these places where you work end up being very uh, transient. People come in, they are only there for a few days or a few months if you're lucky. And so making friends and having a community can be difficult, especially if you're in a place where you're learning the language of the locals. So you aren't quite on a friendship basis with them as you're trying to um, get into their culture and everything. It can be challenging. That was something that I struggled with a lot just not having a community of like-minded people. Quality of care at work. The scuba industry tends to work people pretty hard. The job is not easy. It is typically very long days. You don't get a lot of days off and it's physical, right? You're physically in the water with people and helping people. It's tiring. It's a tiring job. So that can be a challenge. And then on top of it, within the industry, management is not always the best. <laughs> you can be treated like garbage. And uh, that's that's something that you have to be really mindful of, to not get taken advantage of. It can be tiring in that sense. Medical care. A lot of the places in tropical regions, medical care is very affordable, but sometimes it's not the best. So if something really serious happens, that can be an issue. Of course, if you're an American, then you're kind of used to being screwed by the medical system. So maybe that's not, you know, <laughs> I didn't find it that challenging. I thought it was quite nice that I could actually afford medical care. Uh, but I'm also very fortunate to be quite healthy. So, you know, that's a whole other thing. Job security, as we've seen through the last couple of years, something can happen in the industry that just blows it up. So it's really good to have a backup plan. Finally, another one, lifestyles. You know, as we get older, we maybe don't want to be worked so hard. And if we're not in a position of becoming an owner or a manager or, you know, just not being in the water all the time, that can have its limitations, right? You may get out of the work just because 
you know, you're getting older and you have different priorities. I've known tons of people to grow old in the industry as they move up into different positions, uh, have families and stuff, but it just depends on your priorities. Oy, uy, la barriga, uy, la barriga. Que guapa esta. Uy. There are flies all over the place in the van right now. You know, just one of the uh, fun little perks of van dwelling. I should probably get screens at some point. It's a work in progress. Now, specific reasons to why I'm not continuing my teaching status. I've decided to live in the US. My job right now is based in the US. So I'd have to change my location for certifying people. And when that happens, if you move to the United States or to Europe, uh, there are different requirements. I had a certain insurance while I was living in Southeast Asia. That insurance is not good enough here in the States because Americans love to sue each other. It's awesome. <laughs> now you have to maintain your instructor fees every year with your organization. But on top of that, you also have to pay for better professional insurance. That here in the States go, mm, is about a thousand dollars a year or, or possibly more, maybe. I don't know. But it's just an extra expense that at this point, after two years of just like bleeding money, <laughs> I'm just not willing to pay it right now, to be honest. For me, the biggest deciding factor actually was the amount of work and the schedule of teaching in the United States. The majority of people who want to get certified are also working full-time jobs. And so they want to go diving on the weekend and makes total sense. But as a person who's working full time, I kind of sat back and thought, you know, I just don't want to be working seven days a week. It's just not a goal of mine. I've been stressed out for too long. I just, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. On a personal note, teaching in cold water for me is just not super fun. It's challenging for the students. It's not my favorite thing to do. It's something that I could definitely see myself getting into eventually, but at this point it's just not, you know, again, to be working full time, working seven days a week to do this. And on top of it, like have the diving not be super pleasurable. It's, ugh. <laughs> I just, you know, I love diving in California in the right conditions, but sometimes when you're teaching courses, it's not the perfect, you know, it, you just, you're at the mercy of the ocean, right? So like sometimes you have really terrible visibility and you got to do your skills. So it's just not, I don't know. I just don't want to do it. And finally around here, you really have to work as a small business. Like you need to create your network of clients. It really helps to be part of the diving community and really be integrated with a location. And that's just not something that I'm doing right now. You know, I move around with my van and it's been really nice because I've been able to dive in different locations that I maybe didn't have a lot of experience with before. Like the videos that I made for San Diego, I had only been diving there a uh, weekend before I did that. And so it was nice to be able to just like hang out and be there but I'm also not like there long enough that I can make a clientele and advertise for teaching courses, especially when there's such a strong local dive community. You're coming in as like the stranger. I would love to come back to teaching, but it just takes a lot of time and energy that I just am not, I don't think I have in me. I mean, I can't even right now commit to making a video every single week, <laughs> like, it's, uh, you know, I just got to honor that. I don't have the energy for it. <laughs> As for my specifics, I have not taught a course since summer of 2020. Lucia, side mount, that was a good time. But I, you know, I didn't teach a single course in 2021. And so it just doesn't make sense for me to spend the money to remain in teaching status. I will probably only lapse maybe a year because just so you know, um, if you go a long time without paying your instructor fees, you're not receiving the regular updates from your organization 
and it could result in you needing kind of an update or even a full IDC if it's been a long time. So that's something that I want to avoid, but I'm taking 2022 to really just like figure out what, what is life? <laughs> what does life look like for me? Because it's been real reactionary with everything that's happened. This is not a video to discourage you from becoming a scuba instructor. It is by far one of the best things that I've done for myself. And if it wasn't for the pandemic, I would still be doing it for sure. <sighs> what are you going to do? You got to be flexible and find the good, find the joy in what was a really devastating thing that happened. You got to find the joy. And my decisions thus far have been in giving me more stability. And I'm sure you're thinking, but Sarah, you live in a van <laughs> and this may not look stable to you. <laughs> you're not, you're not in this noggin. It works <laughs> somehow. I don't know. <laughs> We're living a good life. <laughs> So that's it for story time. I don't know. Hopefully you got something out of this. I just wanted to share because it's new. I've never not renewed and it's kind of sad, but I know that it's what I need to do. So hopefully this helped somebody or was just interesting and entertaining. I don't really know. Uh, but if you like the video, give it a big ol' thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel for more scuba diving content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Be, uh, be. I've mentioned expeditions in the past and I'm still like sorting through a lot of nonsense in my brain and drama in life <laughs> but eventually eventually I want to pull a group of awesome people from this channel and go scuba diving somewhere so my first spot that I think of, because it's easy, it's close, is Baja. And we could go bother Itor down there. Oh yeah, I know, I know. And Abby might have to come because, you know, she loved Mexico. <laughs> what is this? The spread eagle. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. That's where my head is going. And I want to know if that's something that you would want to do. So if it is, tell me in the comments below. And if you would like seriously want to do it, what time of year works for you? That's, this is all new to me, but I would really just get a kick out of meeting you guys and doing some rad dives down in Mexico. So yeah, let me know. Let me know. Van dogs have the best life ever. We go hiking in the morning and then work all day.